Welcome to the show where heavy metal meets talk in an unholy alliance. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. I am Steve Floyd, the monkey behind uh, the board here as the folks on the other side of the microphones joining us here in the studio. Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises, Dave Giesel from the Alliance for Freedom, or whatever you call it. Close enough. I thought this was the alliance. The Center for Biological Diversity is now it. And and on the the other side, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. This is uh, your show. So what's on your mind this morning? I think we wanted to start it off a little bit talking about the uh, wonderful statist we have and we get to listen to. On a regular basis, either on the radio or people that we meet, people that uh, are all about that federal government. We got to get control. We got to get control, and because the state, the state holds the supreme power. The state is supposed to be the ultimate power. Explain what you mean by statist. What is a statist? What is statism? I don't have a legal definition. I would just say someone that believes ultimately that the state is put it is their god basically the state is the supreme ruler is supposed to have ultimate power over not only the federal government but the people and uh, I would say the difference between those kind of folks and us here is that we have your federalist your status and then you have your individualist we would fall into that last one meaning that with the ultimate responsibility and Freedom lies with the individual as opposed to with any form of government. It's not just uh, responsibility, but ultimate power. Ultimate power lies within the people. In the Tenth Amendment, people love to throw around saying, well, it was reserved. All things not given to the feds were reserved to the state or the people thereof. And the people were the ones. I mean, you have to go back to how things started. You have people create the state. So those people that created the state are the sovereigns of that state you know the so- the whole sovereign word is such a especially because of recent events around Fairbanks and the government likes to throw banter around that if you use that word you're some kind of crazy wild man but really it's a simple thing the people that created the state are the sovereigns of that state they rule over that state they put the government they put the government that they choose to represent them, not they don't put them in power to rule over them. They put them in there to represent them right now to represent them to the federal government or it's supposed to. Ultimately, the only reason they're there is to protect the individual's freedom. That was their original intent was we have all the people saying, the people of a state saying, let's gather together. We'll create a state. That will protect our interests and our individual liberties. States got together and said, let's create a federal government that will protect our interests and our liberties and basically kind of regulate interstate, which has gone way overboard. Ultimately, the people are sovereigns. The state... The states created the federal government to keep the states from oppressing the individual. Right. Each form of government was instituted by the people to protect them. They never ceded their sovereignty. When you get when you created a state, the citizens didn't go, okay, well, here's my, you know, you're the boss now. I mean, you can go back to... uh, Illegally, well, legally, you can't cede your sovereignty. No. It's the idea of, like, voluntary slavery. That's what statism is. But voluntary slavery is a contradiction in terms because as soon as you don't want it anymore, it stops being voluntary. It just becomes regular slavery. <laughs> let me let me ask you this along these same lines: the Bill of Rights in the Constitution wasn't that written to to make sure that we guaranteed the individual rights in the in the face of an ever expanding government? Wasn't that the whole point of why they put the Bill of Rights there in the first place to say, okay, this Constitution is all fine and dandy? But if we don't specifically prohibit the government from doing this, that, and the other thing, then we're going to see all of these rights that we've worked so hard for being sucked away. The big misconception is that the Bill of Rights spells out our rights. It actually spells out the limitations of government. 
any anything not named therein is inherently already in the people. And that's what the Tenth Amendment is all about. The uh, yeah, the Bill of Rights was just enumerating, numbering a few of our rights, unalienable rights. It wasn't saying, okay, federal government, these are the rights that you have to let the people have, and you can regulate them, you can control them. It was saying these are unalienable rights. Let's just write a few of them down. The people have individual rights. We'll write a few down just in case you retards <laughs> forget what they're about. Which and it's turned completely around to make it that these are rights that have been granted to us by the state. And anything that's not enumerated there is fair is fair game for the government to step in and regulate. Well, the key word is that it's been twisted that they're granted to us instead of inherent. That, anything that's been granted could be taken away. Hmm. Well, uh, let me. Well, I, I guess the question that I have that I'm t- still kind of working through in my head then about all of this with the Bill of Rights is that each one of those is individual rights that no level of government really is supposed to be able to regulate, whether it's religion or free speech or second, firearms. firearms or, if you regulate it, then it's not a right. Right. But yeah. And well, getting back to the original uh, point, it was that a lot of people view the Tenth Amendment as giving, well, the federal government can't you know, uh, infringe on your uh, unalienable rights, but the uh, but the state can. That's what the Tenth Amendment means. James Wilson, who was one of the first Supreme Court justices of the, he was signer of both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, and he was uh, in the first Supreme Court. And he said, as a judge of this court, I know and can decide upon the knowledge that the citizens of Georgia, this was speaking particularly about a case with Georgia, but pertaining to all the states, the citizens of Georgia, when they acted upon the large scale of the Union as a part of the people of the United States, did not surrender the supreme or sovereign power to that state, but as to the purpose of the Union, retained it to themselves. So the guy back, I mean, another thing that John Jay, which I think is really good, because it really tells what our state is in our elected so-called officials, he says the differences be- existing between feudal sovereignties and governments found upon compacts, is nece- it necessarily follows that the rep- respective prerogatives must differ. Sovereignty is the right to govern. A nation or state sovereign is the person or persons in whom that reside. In Europe, the sovereignty is generally ascribed to the prince. Here it rests with the people. There the sovereign actually administers the government. Here, never in a single instance, our governors are the agents of the people and at most stand in the same relation to their sovereign which is the people, and which regions in Europe stand to their sovereigns. Their princes have personal powers, dignities, and preeminences. Our rulers have none but official, nor do they partake in the sovereignty otherwise, or in any capacity other than as private citizens. That was John Jay, who was the chief, first Chief Justice of the United States in court. All right, then. Where do we go from here, then? Well, basically, what we're saying is that the state is no more powerful than the federal government over its people. The people are the final and supreme power. They have no right to regulate us any more than the federal government has the right to regulate us. So uh, basically, in conclusion, your people that are arguing for states' rights uh, over the federal government are basically just arguing for a closer master. That's exactly... <laughs> Uh, so what, what should ba- based on that, we might as well just give all the supreme power to the borough. <coughs> just bring it in closer and closer. There. <laughs> because we know if they're right here, they won't oppress us. They won't take away wood stoves. They won't do anything like that. They won't tax the crap out of us and our property and take it from us if we don't agree with what they use their money for. And they won't pay their servants twice what uh, the people make the at the less. cost of the people. It won't happen. <laughs> It won't. <laughs> All right. That being said, it's time for our first uh, break of the hour. And the sponsors of this program, of course, include Bighorn Enterprises. For all of your trucking and construction needs, give them a call at 451-7310. Now, I, I need you to think for just a moment. When was the last time you needed some dirt work done? You needed to make sure that your house wasn't going to have a whole bunch of water in the basement you need somebody to come along and, and move some dirt around. Did you hire somebody out of the Yellow Pages? Did you ask a friend? Or did you 
find somebody that has a reputation in town for finishing the job and for doing it for what you agreed upon, actually completing the entire task for the amount that you said you were going to pay and in the time frame that you said you were going to do it. Does that happen very often these days? Because i got to tell you, my experience has been it doesn't happen very often, whether it's for a small job or for something big like on base. Everybody lately has been making excuses. They've been taking too long, dragging their feet, and charging too much money. When the bottom line comes, they haven't got it completed. They ask for more time and more money, and you're stuck at that point because the job's half done. You need to get it finished. Well, you know what? Do yourself a favor. Skip all that and call somebody who'll do it right the first time and get it done all the way. Bighorn Enterprises, 451-7310. Ask around. You'll find out that their reputation is exactly as I said. They finish the job. They do it right. They do it well. And they do it for the price that you agreed upon. Bighorn Enterprises, 451-7310. At the very least, give them a call and thank them for sponsoring Patriots Lament. Gentlemen, we've got some lines on hold. 458-TALK is the number. You ready to go to the phones? Yeah, let's do it. All right, 458-TALK. Good morning, caller. Who's this? All right, they didn't hold after that. Went to the line, and they were gone. They're teasing us. Scared them off. It's kind of like when you're fishing, and you got that lure out there, and it's kind of jerking around a little bit. You see the fish coming up. You pull too fast, and ah, they're gone. Probably they found out Dave was here. <laughs> yeah, there's always less callers when I'm on. I don't know why that is. I, I don't think you're controversial enough, Dave. <laughs> that might be it. Yeah, you step it up a notch or two. People don't like to talk to Satanists. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was looking at the, what happened Thursday night at the borough meeting, and I, I'm, I'm trying to decide if what we saw was a, an awakening in the borough assembly and the members themselves in which they saw the light, and they're like, oh, wow, we really, we really can freeze the salaries because the people want us to, uh, and it's the right thing to do, or if they were just scared because there were so many people there to show support for the freeze and to testify against these bloated salaries. What do you think? They were scared. Po- politicians capitulate. They never lead. <laughs> they compromise. Like, like by definition, they, they capitulate because in, in a, uh, any sort of democratic uh, system, Right, they have to they have to appeal to the largest mob, so they're always going to capitulate to that mob. They have no spine, they have no philosophical basis, they have no moral basis for anything they do. And I'm speaking of you know all politicians mm-hmm. except for maybe a couple. And so so really, what what you're saying is one of two things, and I I think I know which one it is that you're saying. Either that we need to go out there since we're basically living in a mobocracy right now. Anyway, we need to show up at every meeting and make sure that we. Uh, get our voice across so that when the unions show up to lobby for higher pay or for less hours or for whatever else, then then there's an equal or greater number of people there saying, no, limit the government. Either we're saying that or you're saying that, uh, well, really what we need to do is we need to elect people to office who are people of character, people who actually have a plan. What are you saying? There's a a third option. I'm saying that the system itself is stupid because we're either going to be we have these politicians who capitulate because they because they're human right they have no spine they 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 cave and so we can either say yeah let's just rile up our mob every time we need to get something done or we can say no this is not a good way to deal with our fellow man this is a violent and uh conflict-ridden way to deal with problems in society and it's it's a false solution